Do Koreans take it for breakfast as well? Pardon? Do Koreans take this ginseng, the jeep soup for breakfast as well? Mm, yeah, you can have it for any meal. Any meal. Restaurants, they just serve yeah, 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 for breakfast yeah. also. Because, you know, after, uh, that's very good to clear your head, you know, if you have a little bit of, uh, if you have a little bit of, uh, uh, too much of uh, medic medicine in the uni, yeah? And uh, you have a little bit of a uh, heavy head or so on. That's very good. It clears up your finances and everything. Very nice. <coughs> yeah. Or also what is very delicious is, of course, uh, Korean barbecued uh, beefs, you know, meats, meats. And nowadays, um, you know, Korean beef, you know, like there's some some Korean, there's some areas in Korea that produce excellent, excellent beef. Yeah, Hengsong Hanu is uh, one of the kind of Korean beef. It's a Korean cow, a different breed of cow, brown cow. It's a traditional Korean cow, not not a w imported Westerner, but they they uh, you know breed that kind of uh, cow there and uh, you know the, the the steaks are just you know so tender it's it's, it's just uh, you know very juicy very tender yeah? and uh, uh, you make little steaks you know, little steaks and you barbecue them you know just right just medium or whatever is your taste yeah? but they're already filleted you know, already you know, in bite sizes they come to your table or you can cook them yourself, yeah. But you know, the more upscale restaurants, you know, everything comes to a table already prepared and already fit, fit, finished, and you just eat it. Yeah? <laughs> so nowadays, um, there is uh, in Seoul and in all the major cities, but also in some rural areas, there's some young cooks that you know um, develop the Korean cuisine uh, with some additional elements. And uh, uh, they use the traditional uh, recipes and uh, present them in a very modern form. Yeah? So you have uh, basically the, the, the traditional uh, Korean foods was <coughs> you have everything on one table at, at the same time. Yeah? And it's kind of a little bit overwhelming. Yeah? But uh, what they're doing now is they, they serve it by courses, yeah? course by course. Very delicious. Like one of my favorite restaurants in Seoul is called Talgebi. And they have a very, very delicious kimchi, a new kind of kimchi that they developed. And uh, it's, a, it's a pear kimchi, you know, pear, apple pear, like a huge, one of these huge and really sweet and, and very uh, you know, crunchy kind of pears. And they cut it in half and then they hollow it and they leave just about a centimeter thick wall of the, of the pear. Yeah? And, uh, uh, Partition that, you know, so you have just bite sizes there, and there, and then you fill in a white kimchi in there. Yeah? So the the pear itself is like the dish, yeah? and of course the pear is inside the dish, and uh, you have the white kimchi with the white kimchi uh, water, watery sauce, and yeah? the sour, uh, little spicy, but not too spicy. White kimchi, so it's not very hot, it's not very spicy, and you have that in the middle, and then the pear around. And then the sweetness of the pear, and the sour taste of the kimchi, and uh, the crunchiness of the, the cabbage, yeah? and then you have some uh, like dried uh, plums and some pine nuts and stuff in there, and that very that combination is just you know like fantastic. And it's good for an appetizer, but you leave some, and during the meal, during the other courses, you have a little bit of this in everything in between to refresh your mouth. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so before we adjourn, one last question yeah. for all Malaysians that want uh, that want to visit Korea. I mean, what is your advice to them? When you go to Korea, yes. Uh, number one advice is come to Korea often, <laughs> 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 because if you just come once, you don't see much. Yeah? Um. So if you want to see, you know, number one, come once uh, every season. Uh, <laughs> I mean the winter, I mean the spring, and summer, and the fall, and yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, Seoul, of course, is a fascinating um, uh, urban uh, culture. Like when I just left on Friday, I left last uh, Saturday actually, but on Friday night, we had this fantastic event in the middle of Seoul, right in front of Kwangamun, yeah, of the Gyeongbok Palace, uh, you know, in the middle of the city. This is very wide street, yeah, uh, the Sejong Street, yeah? 
and in the middle of the street now there's a little like, kind of a street park there and in that middle piece of the street uh, they built this huge ski jump ramp yeah? so you have a, a 40 meter high 100 meter long ramp where you have a uh, they have this they call it the snow jam and it's a competition of uh, uh, you know uh, ski boarding acrobats acrobatics basically ski jump uh, world champion the juggle so, so what they do they take off and they jump and they turn in the air or do all kind of acrobatics and land again yeah? Yeah. and that in the middle of the city at night yeah, with the city lights and the palace in the background and the buildings and the road yeah, it's a uh, uh, just mind-blowing image yeah? and you can see the huge screens yeah? And you can see the camera, you know, from behind the skier and on the on the helmet of the skier. And you can see him coming down on this snow slope with artificial snow, and you can see the, you know, the the, the landscape of the city <laughs> with all the city lights, you know, and the the, the main road there. Yeah? And then you have the ski guy, and he goes <laughs> like this, and, and you see the palace, <laughs> and everything. That it's uh, mind blowing images. So this urban culture of Seoul is really fantastic. So. In Seoul, you can see you know, the shopping areas, the markets, um, the department stores, if you like. But at the same time, in Seoul, you also have, you know, just in, in the north of Seoul, and it's just in the city limits, you have uh, uh, Buddhist uh, 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 monasteries. You go up the mountain for an hour or a half hour if you fast, and you have, you're in the middle of nature, and you can see the city still. And you have the, the tranquility of the Buddhist temple behind you, and actually, by the way, there, you know, right behind the Gyeongbok Palace, in that, you know, the Pukhanshan, which is the, the mountain in the north of Seoul, uh, there is a, a very nice monastery uh, run by Buddhist female monks. Mm. And when you go there at lunchtime, you get free lunch, you know, a Buddhist lunch, you know, with mm -hmm. rice and, and vegetables, no meat, you know, just vegetarian. But it's very, very delicious, especially after you walked up in the mountain <laughs> for a, an hour. And uh, the, the monks are very friendly, and, and it's a very nice atmosphere, and everybody is sitting together and having their rice and their lunch. And uh, um, but then you come down and go to the traditional market, like there is a, a traditional Chinese medicine market, or there is a, the 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 Dongdaemun market, which is like a, a textile market. But there is uh, some areas where there is, you know, the the Duta Tower, for example, this is one huge tower full of little boutiques where the little boutique has their own designer yeah. it's a it's a their own brand but it's not famous brands but the the styles and so on are very you know avant-garde and very cheap so where you can have your your own designer clothes but you're not not a really famous designer but a kind of very uh, uh, special design so yeah. so that's a very fascinating thing and then if you like some traditional culture you have the palaces and take a tour of the palaces. But uh, what I always recommend is at least take one or two days to go to the mountains. Yeah? To go out of Seoul, go to the countryside, the Chiri Mountain or Hebek Mountain in Kangwondo or Keryong Mountain. And these mountains are so special because they have a lot of power spots, you know, very intense energy spots. Yeah? Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, religious sites there, you know, the Buddhist monasteries or uh, Confucian um, schools or or shamanistic uh, shrines or, or altars and uh, um, you know Christian uh, prayer uh, prayer prayer uh, retreats and so on because these mountains are very spiritual yeah <laughs> and so uh, if you go there you can see a lot of this spiritual thing but also it's beautiful nature and the mountains are not too high you can you can climb it without much equipment. You don't need special climbing shoes or anything. Just you know, your your uh, sneakers is okay. Um, uh, and uh, if you're not, if you don't like to climb, then there is also many hiking paths that you know go around the mountains. So you don't have to go uh, don't have to go up. So you can go basically around the mountain. Yeah, and still be in nature, but you don't have to, to sweat and climb. 